So in terms of intensity, what's the best way for someone to gauge? Is it heart rate? Is it someone who's not going into a lab and measuring their yeah. VO2 max, but you know, measuring your heart rate, or is it measuring um, some calculator online that makes your VO2 max? <laughs> you know, what is what is the best? You can do, you can do any of those things. Yeah. So if you're lifting weights, we generally would say in resistance exercise type of stuff, it's percentage of your one rep max. If you don't know your one rep max, that's fine. You can think about another idea was called repetitions in reserve. It's another way of saying, okay, you lifted that thing six times. How many you think you could have done total? I think I could have done eight. Okay, so that means you left two in reserve. Okay, great. And so you can say, hey, uh, yeah, that exercise over there, when I put 50 pounds on it, all right, I, I got about six reps and I have two reps in reserve. So that's a rep in reserve. If I put 10 more pounds on it, I would only do it four. It's, you can kind of gauge it that way, right? So mm -hmm. how many left is one way to think about it. If you want to just go based on heart rate, that's fine too. It's not as good as some other stuff, but for a general person, that's fine. Um, I really don't spend much time using either one of those things. Mm -hmm. uh, we think about things more like, can you do this thing while breathing through your nose only? Uh, this is Brian McKenzie and his uh, gear system, right? So if you can do this thing nasal only, that's gear two. Mm -hmm. If you have to go either nose and mouth or mm -hmm. mouth to nose, it doesn't matter, but you're using both, gear three. Mm -hmm. If you have to go straight up like, mouth in, mouth out, because you need so much volume, that's that's gear four, right? That auto-regulates a lot of stuff. And so I want to know like, oh, that was gear three. Okay, great. So that's a pretty easy way to just say like, okay, that's my intensity level, one to four. Then that's generally what we'll program. Hey, you're going to do this workout, whatever. This is how far you're going to go, how long you're going to go or whatever. And I want you in gear three, which means if you go to gear four, you got to slow down. You're going too hard, right? But if you're in gear two, not to that for most, most people. How does that relate to zones, right? We see a lot of zone, like, you know, the Peloton has zones, like all these sorts of things, like get into zone two. If you're listening to this, I want you to hear my eyes rolling yeah. on that question. <laughs> hey, if you're watching, you, you saw it already. Um, I just, gonna be totally honest, I don't find a lot of value in zones. If you don't know your maximum heart rate, if you've never had that accurately tested, then those zones mean nothing to you because they're so variable yeah. in people, right? Imagine I gave you the same thing for lifting weights. And I said, okay, so for you, moderate is between 170 and 220 pounds. Yeah, that's not, that's not possible. You, right. it, it is insane, right? And that changes every time you work out. I mean, not every time, but every few weeks or every few months. Well, it can literally change every day. Yeah. It can, right? Now, I'm being a little bit facetious there because the range of people's strength is much bigger than the range of people's heart rates. But you went from nonsensical to like, oh, okay, I see that there's problems here. So unless we know your actual heart rate, and there's no relationship between maximum heart rate and fitness. So my pro athletes might have a maximum heart rate of 175 beats a minute. We might have some of our least fit people whose max heart rates get 205. There's no relationship there. Or the inverse can happen too. So just arbitrarily designing zones. In addition, like who picked zone two cutoff versus zone three? I mean, I know the answer to these, but they're just like, they're not. Why is it four zones instead of it's five? not science-based. It is science-based, but it's still arbitrary. Yeah. It is science-based. It's yeah. not fake. Yeah. What it is is you run giant studies, right? And then you run statistical modeling, and you usually use standard deviations. This is also, by the way, the problem why running any sort of blood work and interpreting the, where you're at based on reference ranges is a horrific idea. Yeah. Right? It, it tells you absolutely nothing for most people. Because you're working on a bell curve, which means we're saying uh, in giant studies, a 1,000 people, up to a million people, right? What, are, what does the world look like? Okay, 97% of people are on this bell curve. The last 2.5% over here, 95% rather, the last 2.5% are at the bottom, highest 2% on the other side. And if you are in the 95% in the middle, you're in the normal reference range. You're like, great. So if I'm the third percentile, I'm normal. That's the same words out for my doctor as if I'm in the 93rd percentile. Yeah. That is still normal. All right, so like here, this is this is now a giant problem, right? And we don't, we're not really interpreting that. that that's not the same person. That's not the same functioning yeah. person on those metrics. So you want to be really careful when paying attention to things like that. And the same thing could go back to our, our heart rate zone. It's like it's not arbitrary. It's not fake. Yeah. But it is just like a giant range of like you're not dead. You're not like you're not about to die too long. That's your goal. Yeah. <laughs> so great job. You're not dead, right? And this is all the way back to where you started this whole conversation was like, we want to be preventative a little bit, right? Yeah. Med medicine wants to be preventative. We don't do prevention. We further down that line, which is like, I, I don't care about prevention. You guys can handle prevention. I care about performing better. How do you perform at your absolute best, right? That's just what we spend our time on. So those numbers aren't good enough for me. So I don't care about someone decided there's three zones or four zones or five zones or six. I call it 16. I don't care. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean anything to me. I'm going to coach you 
based on your physiology. I don't care about a made up zone. Like I just don't. So say you're new to exercise and you start exercising and you choose a goal or so you did mention, you know, what is sort of the traits of a healthy person? What yep. what would you define as traits of a healthy person in terms of when they're trying to just be healthy? What are things that you want to see in their exercise regimen outside of the stressors that we've talked about sort of reducing those? So if we look at in order to stay alive, what do we need to be able to do? And we'll work backwards from there. We talked about balance. That's on my list, right? Yep. Don't want to fall and we don't want to lose balance and all the other problems associated with that. All right, great. I need to have speed and power. We talked about that. Mm -hmm. I need to have strength. Mm -hmm. Okay, like I need to be able to go up, um, not only a flight of stairs, but you hate hiking. You want to go to the, like any number of things, right? Mm -hmm. Now, we talked a little bit about having some adequate amount of muscle. I don't need you to be giant or even close. I just can't have you insufficient. Or losing all that muscle. And that's the problem, right? You might be sufficient, and we deal with this a lot. You're 55, and you are sufficient now, but we know you're going to discontinue to lose muscle the rest of your life. So I can't have you at average. I have to have you at above average. Then I need to have some sort of metric of cardiovascular health, right? Look at VO2 max. Uh, as daunting as it is to have poor muscle mass with age, strength is probably a bigger predictor of all-cause mortality. VO2 max would be the closest equivalent to that. 